well. Um, this is Lee DeMuth, and he's here from the District Attorney's Office, and he'll tell you more about his role as in our area. He does these presentations all up and down the valley, both with kids and with families, and we're just really thankful to have the education so that we can be proactive with our kids and um, kind of keep our eyes out and know what to kind of prepare them for. Because the world's out there, there's so many things they have access to at such an early age. So we're glad that you guys are here and hope you spread the word from whenever you learn while you're here too. So I'll let you. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming out tonight. Um, hopefully I'm not taking up too much of your time. Uh, Get something useful out of this, but uh, I haven't been in to speak to the eighth graders. I think we hit the whole eighth grade class here at this whole middle school just in, in the last month of the month before. It. Um, so if you have a child in the eighth grade, they've probably heard some of this. All of the material I talk about here, all the videos are the same as what we showed to the kids, so you get to see what they're seeing as well. Um, and then obviously the topic's a little bit different just because we're talking about prevention um, from a parent standpoint as opposed to prevention from a uh, student standpoint or potential victims. Um, so this is a little bit about my background. Actually, just as of Friday, I'm now the chief investigator for the uh, district attorney's office. Our former chief left for the AG's office for chief. And, um, I never I can really thank you. Um, so my background, I, I was in the military for a while. I started in law enforcement in South Dakota before I moved here to Hill uh, County. And I worked in the sheriff's office there uh, for about four and a half, five years. And that's where I got started in digital forensics. And we've actually, we've got a lab in Rifle um, up at the airport with the sheriff's office. Panic is up there that is the biggest on the western slope. We do digital forensics for pretty much everybody except Mesa and Grand, or, uh, yeah, Mesa Grand Junction have their own. Um, pretty much everywhere else. I think Montrose finally got their own built. Uh, everywhere else we do a lot of their forensics. So computers, phones, tablets. Um, and then as part of that, I'm also a member of the Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force. And that's just a group of local state and federal law enforcement. We work together to uh, just combat anything that's going online that's targeting kids. So it's a lot of undercover investigations targeting um, child predators and then a lot of investigations for uh, child pornography offenses. Um, and unfortunately, we have uh, a lot of the both here in our area, uh, which we'll talk about a bit tonight. So uh, this presentation comes from uh, netsmarts.org. Uh, it's a good website if you want to check it out. There's resources there for parents. Um, there's some games and stuff on there for kids if you want uh, your kids to go on. And there's like quizzes and stuff. There's also re uh, resources there as well for educators. Um, some kind of prepackaged programs that teachers can uh, throw into a class if they're talking about digital safety. Uh, and I do these presentations for the whole gamut. I think the youngest I've done, um, just last week I spoke to a group of uh, second to fifth graders at a church group over in Silt. Um, obviously we keep the subject matter pretty light. Uh, it's actually just uh, being a good digital citizen is what we talk about. But we do talk about, you know, talking to strangers and stuff online. Uh, we have a program for tweens, uh, which is generally like our sixth graders. Um, again, it's a little lighter subject matter than uh, what we're going to talk about tonight. And then we have a teen presentation, and that's where we kind of run the full gamut from online bullying to uh, sexual solicitation. Um, we talk a lot about uh, sexting now, um, sextortion, just because we have so many kids. Um, actually, my youngest case now is nine. He's in his nine now, taking uh, nude images of themselves and sharing them. So we try to address all that uh, with the kids, and we'll talk about all that tonight as well. But a lot of those resources are. So when we talk about online, sometimes people think, uh, you know, we're just talking about computers or cell phones, but everything goes online these days. You know, iPods are basically just a cell phone without a cell radio in them. Um, Kindles, my, uh, my five-year-old actually, he turned his um, Halloween candy in to the dentist in Rifle this year, and instead of giving away money, they were giving away raffle tickets, and he won a Kindle, so he's got a brand new Kindle flyer, which luckily they have a kid's version on there that kind of locks it down, but as young as that, before that, and again, uh, he had one of those little leap pads, um, I, I think since he was three. So again, the ability to go online, a lot of that stuff that's designed for kids is locked down to where they can't do anything with it. Um, but it's just another potential source where they can get online and either get into trouble or get other people into trouble. Uh, the same goes with gaming devices. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, your Playstations and your Xboxes, they're just little computers now. Um, and almost every game has some sort of chat component built into it. We've had cases come up through uh, everything. We've had cases come in through YouTube. Um, we've had cases come in through like the online World of Warcraft. If anybody's heard about that, it's a little bit older. 
Uh, we have a sexual solicitation case coming there. So any way that uh, adults can communicate with kids online, they're using that technology to, uh, to contact <coughs> their kids. So what do your guys' kids do online? Just kind of help me target this a little bit. Games. TV. When you say online, can you be more specific? Do you mean like, like actually connecting through the internet and beyond, not just like a homework assignment? Yeah, yeah, outside of just like schoolwork. Uh, YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. That's one thing. Every grade, all the way down. When I was talking to the uh, second and third graders last week, they watch YouTube. My uh, my five year old watches YouTube. He figured out how to get on it on our TV. And there's, I mean, it's innocent stuff. There's like kids or guys playing with toys, and you'll sit there and watch that for hours. So, um, my big cases come up to YouTube, unfortunately. Yes. I don't have children, but I work for the school district, and I work at an, el an elementary school, and we're having a lot of um, kiddos that are doing these apps, like musically and such, and then they're commenting on their, you know, their performance, and so we're having. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Musically, actually, I learned about from sixth graders a couple yeah. years ago mm -hmm. in Carbondale. I hadn't even heard of it. Um, a student in one of my presentations brought it up, and then it wasn't but two or three days later, I saw on our listserv, um, our national listserv for ICAC investigators, somebody was trying to get contact information for the legal department because we had had cases come up, and that's what it was. Uh, if you don't know what Musically is, you can go on there and make like your own little lip sync video. Um, they're short, I think, 10, 15 seconds is all, and you can post them on social media or you can post them through Musical.ly. And then again, people can go on there and comment, and that's what uh, people are doing. I had a very similar case come up with YouTube once, actually, where uh, I think it was a couple of girls in a video just dancing, and then some guy was proposing or posing to be uh, Justin Bieber's agent, and reached out to these girls to say, hey, look, you know, I want you to be in our dance video, and then, of course, it pr progressed to where he was asking them for uh, new videos and stuff, so. So the, the potential's out there, um, pretty much on any way, again, that your kids can get online. So does everybody recognize all the apps up there? These are mostly mobile apps. Um, so we'll go through some of these, just something to keep an eye out. Uh, so I actually, I just to kind of get some of the ground rules out, I'm certainly not here to tell you what to do with your kids. I'm not a parent, or I'm a parent of my own kids. I'm not a parent of yours. I have a lot of suggestions. Um, but oftentimes I get asked, you know, what age is appropriate for this or that. I can't tell you that. Um, you know your kids better than I do. Uh, hopefully, after we talk tonight, you'll have a little better understanding of some of the responsibilities that come with maybe having a cell phone or being able to go online with no filtering. Um, and uh, some of the examples I use tonight are real cases I work. Because one of the problems I run into when I do have victims is parents and, and students both come to me and say, hey, we didn't know this stuff happened here. Uh, for the most part, we live in a safe valley. Uh, we don't have a lot of the crimes like we do in Denver, but we do have a lot of this stuff going on because, again, these guys can reach out from anywhere. Uh, most of my suspects are actually from out of state. Uh, it kind of makes our investigations difficult. But we do have victims here. It's just it's not getting reported on uh, because our victims are juveniles, and so we try to protect their identity. Um, so I kind of keep the, the stories are pretty generic just to, again, protect my victims. Um, I'll answer questions the best I can, uh, but I can't be too specific just because I don't want anybody to uh, be identified. So. So some of the apps up here, uh, this one up here with the little yak, this was in the paper a couple years ago. It sounds popular now, it's called Yik Yak. You remember hearing about that? It's just an, an, an anonymous board, basically. You can go on there and post whatever you want, completely anonymously, they say. There's ways we can track it. Um, it was being used pretty bad for cyberbullying right away when it came out, but they do have a feature in there. It's geo uh, geolocation based. So I think all the schools now, at least in RE1, I know, are geofenced to where the kids can't use it in school. Once I couldn't use it in school, it wasn't as popular, but I still see activity on there from time to time. Uh, Meet Me is an app that uh, we see a lot of our child exploitation cases come from. It's just a online, um, you can do it through your phone, just a way to go out and have uh, conversations with strangers, basically. Um, this one up here is KeepSafe. It's a mobile application for phones. Um, I think Android, I'm not sure if they have an iPhone. I don't believe they operate on iPhone yet. Uh, it's a photo vault, basically, where you can set a password and drop pictures into um, that application. So even if you're going through your kid's phone or if you have access to it through iCloud or something, you won't be able to see that stuff and then it's protected with a passcode that's separate from the phone. Uh, this one up here is WhatsApp. It's a pretty popular um, communication. Again, it's just an instant messenger. You can also get a phone number on WhatsApp. Uh, I like to tell parents about that because 
even if you, your kid just has like an iPod that doesn't have cellular capability, they can still get a WhatsApp number, text with other people who have cell phones, and actually receive calls, voicemails, everything through, uh, through WhatsApp. Uh, text now is just another, um, again, it's an online texting. We don't see it a lot on phones. We see it more on iPods and stuff because it allows you to get a number you can text from. Uh, this one down here, the Tiger, this is the after school app. Uh, I don't know too much about this. They have it pretty locked down um, in an effort to protect kids, but it's, it's an app that's just designed for kids to have a place to hang out online basically after school. Um, you're supposed to have a school email address to sign up on there, so we have a hard time getting them because they always burn our undercover accounts and then they kick us off. Um, we haven't had too many problems with it locally, but on the national level, we've seen a lot of cases come up through this because, again, our uh, predators or suspects who are out there doing this stuff are pretty good and they can hack into a lot of this stuff. Uh, Tumblr is a photo app, or it's also a, just online as well. It's just a photo blog. We see a lot of kids using that now. Um, they're kind of going away from Facebook for the most part. I see a lot of kids who still have one, but they're not as active. It's more the uh, like Tumblr, Instagram, that sort of uh, stuff that's going online. Uh, that, the little lines there, that's actually Musical.ly. Um, that's what we were talking about before, where kids can go online, make a quick video, like a music video, and post it. Um, this up here is Omega. This is uh, both, uh, there's a mobile version, um, it's also on computers. It's just another random chat app. So you can go on there, you can actually go on a webcam, and then it just connects you randomly to people throughout the world. Um, or you can set your uh, location if you want. Um, and again, it's just another way. We see a lot of cases come up through Omega as well. Um, of course, Twitter, most everybody is familiar with. Uh, Instagram is a division of Facebook, and it's mostly just photos. But again, people can post comments on there. We've had a lot of cases come up where kids are posting selfies, guys reply to the comments, and then conversation ensues from there. So some of the apps we do have problems with. Uh, Kick, has anybody heard of Kick Messenger? Not too many. So Kick is a Canadian company. It's a, uh, just another instant messenger app. Um, you can also share pictures and videos within the app. Uh, they're fairly law enforcement friendly, actually. They've been trying to improve um, relationships with us the best they can because this was being really heavily used for the last couple of years for child exploitation. Um, they used to have a random connect option on there, kind of like Omega, where it would just randomly put you online with um, anybody else you wanted. They did away with that, so now you at least have to kind of know somebody or at least know their kick ID to talk to them. But we still see a lot of cases come up uh, through Kick. Of course, Facebook, most everybody is familiar with. Um, Facebook and Facebook Messenger, that's the uh, mobile app for Messenger. Um, still have a lot of cases come up through Facebook, even though kids aren't using it as much. Um, again, usually it's kids are posting selfies, um, guys, and that's my other disclaimer I forgot. 90% of my suspects are adult males, mostly um, victims or juvenile females. We do have male victims, and I'll talk about some of the specifics of that. Um, and we do have female offenders, I've had a couple of cases. But when I say guys, and you make reference to uh, suspects, I'm not picking on males, it's just reality of kind of what I deal with. So. Um, again, we have guys who go on there, comment on the photos, or contact kids through Messenger. Um, we just had a guy, I think from the Seattle Tacoma area, who was hitting up a bunch of kids over in Carbondale. Because um, usually they'll target one once they get like, a friend request accepted, and then they start hitting up all their friends. And he was hitting up girls from between the ages of 11 and 14, trying really hard to get uh, nude images of them. Um, and this was just a couple weeks ago, so. Uh, Snapchat, this has actually become pretty uh, mainstream. When this first came out, it was pretty much just designed for sexting. Um, we actually had a webinar on this when it first came out a few years ago, uh, because that's all kids were using it for. So Snapchat, originally it was just designed to basically take self-destructing pictures. Um, you take a picture, you can set the timer of it from one to 10 seconds, and then you send it to somebody and then it allegedly wipes off their phone after that time expires. Um, what people then realize is that the person on the other end can just do a quick screenshot and then they get to save that photo anyway. Um, it's become pretty mainstream now, actually. There's a lot of, uh, you know, during the political campaigns, multiple campaigns, it's Snapchats, um, it's advertised right along with Twitter and Facebook. Um, so it's uh, got a better reputation than it used to, but it was designed, it was designed by a couple of college kids who uh, wanted to sex with girls and they said a lot of them wouldn't send them because they were worried about them getting spread around. So they created this app and put it out, so. That's the one, Snapchat's the one that we get reported mostly with kids having drama with each other here at school. Yeah, they just started this new feature on there called Streaks, I guess. The, the idea is you have to send or receive a picture like every, I think 
it's every 24 hours, and then the longer streak you have, the coolest you are. And kids, again, they're, they're playing these games and take it pretty seriously. It's the newest thing I've heard on there. Um, this one, this looks like your, uh, kind of your standard calendar or calculator app for your iPhone. It's actually called My Secret App. Um, it looks just like the calculator when you open it up. It looks just like the iPhone calculator, um, functions as a calculator. And so you put your code in, and then again, it's just like Keepsafe, it's another photo wall. Where uh, mostly kids, I've seen this on adults' phones as well, usually when people are trying to hide things from their spouses or something. Um, but you can go in there and dump pictures and videos, and uh, again, parents can't see it even if they are checking their kids' phones. Um, a good way to catch this one, though, is to go into your permissions. So on both Android and iPhone, you go into your security and check your permissions on what's allowed to access what. And if you see a, ca or a calculator that's allowed to access your phone or your um, camera on your phone, it's a good sign your normal calculator app can't do that. So if you see that, it's going to be this My Secret app, probably worth a conversation with you know, what's in there. Um, so this is a slide I actually picked up from the, uh, the Illinois ICAC. Um, they put their own presentation together separate from this. Um, and I'm going to send all this stuff out. You guys will get a digital copy of this as well as some handouts, so don't feel the need to, uh, to write all this down. But um, it's just some questions to ask yourself when you are trying to determine, you know, is my kid going for an iPod? Or are they ready for a cell phone? Are they ready for their own computer? Um, most of the schools now, I think, I'm not sure how they're doing it. Are they, going, are they getting Chromebooks yeah. pretty early on? Mm -hmm. I think fourth? Yeah, I think my kids start at the charter school in Glenwood. They're, they're handing them out at first grade now. They're getting Chromebooks. Um, so it's becoming more and more popular. So uh, some of that's going to be kind of out of your hands. But again, it's just some questions to ask. Uh, it's just like anything else. You know, is your kid ready to drive? Are they ready to stay home alone? Um, a lot of it has to do with their level of responsibility and their level of awareness. Because a lot of our online predators who are picking on our kids, they prey on that um, they, uh, kind of the name nature of children and that curiosity um, and that's what they're going for that's how they get these kids to do things that they know they should be doing um, so just questions to ask yourself like i said we'll get a copy of this out so some of the specific things we'll talk about tonight uh, inappropriate content online uh, online privacy kids believe it or not are one of the top targets for identity thieves they can get their information even though they're not an adult if they have their social and uh, some basic information they can still get credit in their name um, and then generally, you know, you're not checking your kids' credit reports like you are hopefully checking your own from time to time. Um, and then when they go to get their first loan or, you know, try to get a uh, cell phone or something on their own when they get older, they can't because there's like 10 years of bad credit history. So we're actually recommending now when you get your free credit report, run your kids' information as well just to be sure. Uh, we'll talk about sexting. It's a problem we're seeing up and down the valley. Uh, online sexual solicitation and then uh, cyberbullying. 